Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy a lovely cup of tea as we begin our diplomatic strategy meeting, where we are going to be aligning ourselves either, I imagine, with Valesgrand or Lesbia, the East versus West, capitalist versus communist. And considering we're going for a lot more of a communist playthrough, we're probably going to be going that direction. But we shall see the doors to the White Room. Like everything else in the Marine Palace, main service center were painted white. I took a deep breath before pushing them open. <clears throat> time for yet another meeting. At least this time is with people who liked me. Oh, I wish I had that in real life. The attendees rose from their seats. Mr. President, Yosef nodded. He and Lucien sat down while David remained standing. Now the joy, uh, let us talk about our diplomatic strategy. <clears throat> David cleared his throat. Mr. President, if I may, I would like to provide you with a short overview of where we are at right now. Yes, please, sir, go ahead. We have successfully passed trade deals with both Welin and Angola, which means we've increased our presence in those regions. These deals were important pieces of leverage and significant first steps into the global arena. We must now look towards the future. What do you mean by looking towards the future? Well, I imagine he means looking at our long-term political alignment between the East and West, or if we wish to continue treading a middle ground. It's time to take the next steps. Precisely. David sat down, pulled out a few papers, and started going through them as he kept talking. Well, in Angolia, we're practice run that we must begin improving our relationships with greater nations. Wow, they wouldn't like being called lesser nations. Good thing this is a secret meeting. We need to elevate our international standing, especially with the threat of Rumberg looming. Yosef cleared his throat. Thanks to the wise investment, Swedish army is on its way to becoming a force to be reckoned with. Whether it be Rumberg or anybody else, we can handle outside threats just fine. We don't need to beg for help from anybody else. The friendliness won't hurt. Thank you for your input, I will consider it. You're right, I will not let Sodom look weak. We'll ask a question, like we could just suck up to him entirely, but I believe some, you know, critical thought would be useful here. I agree. There is nothing more to be lost by making alliances. A military perspective is important, but these deals are about more than just gaining allies. We also need to consider the benefits to our economy such a deal will provide. We may be close to ending the recession, yes, but why not go a step further? Agreed. David took a seat and brought two sacks of documents. At the start of our term, I had a comprehensive trade plan laid out. Following the visits to Welland and Angola, we were to pursue potential trade agreements with two great nations. Valsgland is one of them. If we can manage to get them to the table, there is much more potential here than in Welland and Angola, because they are the most important countries in CSP. A deal with Valsgland is a ticket to bring Sorton closer to the UC sphere. Dealing with countries in the CSP is dangerous, I agree. They have tried to overthrow us in the park. We should do whatever we can to get them on our side. Um, we don't need the help. We'll, we, we should be doing, maybe not whatever, but, you know, dealing with them is dangerous, but I believe the risks are worth it. And if we're friendly with them, you know, they're less likely to try pop up a rebellion. I agree. Vandersland is certainly power enough to deter Rumberg. Moving to Lesbia. Our southern neighbor is one of the wealthiest countries in eastern Mount Copper. A trade deal with them would be very beneficial, not just for our economy, but also our regional and international presence. Not to mention that they are in Casius sphere. A trade deal with Lesbia could open many doors for us. I do not wish to get closer. Yes, it would be very beneficial. True, a country as influential as Lesbia could help elevate our economy. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I need to know your decision before we can proceed. What should we do? I believe we should begin negotiations with both Valgisland and Lesbia. Excellent news. I will be in at once. That is all I had for today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, gentlemen. Yosef saluted and we left the White Room. All of the Bloods will not be particularly enthused about it. You know, they are benefiting from the well and trade deal. We've seen an uptick in the economy in the region. So that is good. With blood, we get money. Healthcare has been improved thanks to our investment into it which is happy. Unfortunately, that is compounded by isolated polio cases seen in Bergia, which are probably going to be exacerbated by the Day of Dissension ceremony and large parties or whatever goes on on that religious holiday. So we should probably, you know, work towards curtailing that. Rain will visit both Valisland and Lesbia for a trade deal. I imagine we can only get one of them, but 
you know, we should start off optimistic and just try to get anything we can. I don't entirely know why economic growth has gone down to green, back to barely being stagnant, but hopefully we'll be able to rectify that relatively soon. And the port of Lakavin gains new importance after the completion of our highway. So it's good that they're synergizing. I imagine that would be the case. And, you know, ship things through rail, port them out. And then we're going to be developing industry over here. It should be a lovely boost to the economy in that region. But we're going to be starting with the day of descent. Morning haze surrounded the city of Dare as the sun dawned on the day of dissension, the holiest day of the Nurity religion. It celebrated the first message received from God by St. Das and his 30 disciples. As per tradition, the celebration was held inside the arch sanctuary at Stenerity, closed to the public eye. This year, however, for the first time it was going to be televised. This was Lucian's idea, as he saw her granting people the rare glimpse of the grand ceremony and showing them how seriously their president took this holy event would ease any tensions that lingered in the region. And so we arrived at the largest cathedral in all of Swordland, a huge crowd gathered around our convoy as our car pulled up to the entrance. This will work out well. Trust me, sir. Of course, that's only if the prayer is done completely correctly. Please do not forget the order. Fortunately, your president has perfect memory. First, you will need to grasp the holy scepter with your left hand and touch the altar with your right. Okay, that's my favorite. Nice left-right hook. Got it. Kneel before the archpriest. Wait for him to put the sword on your shoulder, then touch the sword with the hand you touched the altar with. So left, right, right. Okay, got it. Hand the scepter over to the archpriest and receive the sword before passing it to the disciple. Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, got it. Left, right, right. You know, kneel, pass the sword to the disciple after you receive it. Fairly simple ordeal. Very good. You will go first and I will come inside later, and we'll meet up after you've done your part. Good luck, sir. I'll need it. I'll probably cock this up. I exited the car and was greeted by a chorus of cheers and camera function. I waved to the people as I made my way to the Grand Gates. The Ark Sanctuary was a sight to see, with its towering visage that cast a shadow of a large portion of the city. I had to crane my neck to see the narrow spires at the top, just standing next to it made me feel an awe and dread in equal measure. As I reached the gates, I spotted a welcoming committee. The archpriest and the disciples were waiting for my arrival. And when I approached, they all bowed their heads in respect. The archpriest gave me an infectious smile as he straightened his back. Tall and handsome in his mid-fifties, he was one of the youngest and most popular archpriests in history. Some of his more avid followers even liked him to St. Dats. Mr. President, praise God. It's a blessing to see you on our most holy day again. Welcome, welcome. Bow your head before the archpriest. Yes. We'll, we'll show our deference to religion. The crowd was still cheering loudly. The archpriest turned and raised both hands and everybody immediately fell silent. Oh, great people of Swordland, once again we are gathered here to honour the day of dissension. I am indescribably happy to be sharing this moment with you, as well as every blue sword, old, young, tuning in on their television to watch this holy ceremony. Along with the leader of our great nation, I say, let the holy day begin. Stay far from evil, O oh sons and daughters, for evil hides itself under many disguises. Disguises such as blasphemy, ecstasy, and even alcohol. Be good, my children. Praise God. Praise Swordland. These smiles and be beautiful. Wait, be to fishing. And the crowd burst into rapturous applause. After it subsided, he turned to me. Shall we move inside for your confession? Sure, let my confession... I feel like pulling him aside would be rude. And that's just dismissive. And that's showing stupidity. Right, fine. Yes, yeah, just like Yastia. Every man must confess before the holy ceremony start. He led me through the main hall, which had a statospheric ceiling and nearest icons lining the walls. He walked up the creaking spiral staircase to the top floor and finally arrived at the front confession chamber. Right this way, he gestured toward the chair in a dark room. The room smelled of old mahogany and scented candles. The archpriest proceeded to light each and every one of the candles, one for each virtue and vice. I would be right with you. He left the room. A minute later, I heard the sound of a sliding window right next to me. He spoke with a very soft voice. Anton Wren, speak. Speak and confess now before the one God, and may he repent your sins on the most holy day of dissension. I am not going to admit bribery, because that could be used against me. I know they're meant to, you know, keep hush-hush about this, but it's just stupid. I confess 
And I'm not sure whether I have been, you know, we have to confess something, otherwise these things, you know, we're lying and we're peasants. So, you know, we'll, we'll you know, confess that we're working our hardest, we're slaving away, but we're not sure. You do carry heavy burdens on your shoulders. What you have confessed is not a sin, but you may share your burdens with me if you like. Still don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I'm trying to reform the country, but I don't know if the country has read it for it yet. Reformation is one of the tenets of nearity, yet it must come slowly but surely. Anything else you would like to confess? I confess I have been a bad husband. I haven't. I'd like, uh, I've done everything I can to be a good husband. I know I'm busy at work, but every option I have had to spend time with family and I have. Still, you know, we'll confess it. Family is the cornerstone of society. Under the watchful eyes of God, men are required to protect their wives and family. But God created us in complex creatures. At times, conflicts rise among us. Tell me, what is your sin? I've been neglecting my family due to the stress of my position. Tragedy of neglect happens to all working men that feed his family. Rejoice! God is kind in the matter of family. Anything else you would like to confess? But no, that's all, sir. For God, I thank you for sharing. You are now forgiven before God, Anton Rain. May you never sin again. The side <laughs> window closed, and the archpriest entered the confession chamber. For the confession to end, you must extinguish the candles representing each one of your virtues and vices. With this, the once burning sin connected to you are now smoke and then nothing. Extinguish the candles one by one. Well done, Mr. President. Let us move on to my quarters before the ceremony. He led me through a thousand-year-old corridor to his office. The smell of dust and old tombs was in the air, along with the scent of burning incense being prepared for the ceremony. Well then, please, have a seat. The wooden chairs next to her looked like they had turned to dust at a single touch. I sat down gingerly. It was surprisingly sturdy. Are you ready for the ceremony? Absolutely. Very good to hear. He leaned back in his chair comfortably. I wanted to talk to you about something. I realize it's been months since Benfi Festival, but this is my first chance to bring it up with you. It's about the actions of the First Lady. As you know, the festival is a holy event. Letting a woman make the opening speech did not set well on us. We share the same concerns as Mr. Leslie. A woman is placed beside her family and not giving public speeches and revealing dresses. Certainly not insulting the important traditions behind such an event. Disgust is apparent on his face. Of course, we cannot ask you to do anything about it. Cheers, your wife. But I just wanted to voice our disapproval of the situation. Women presiding over such an important religious event. What have we become? I let her do her speeches because people like you. That's not your business. I agree with this, but, you know, I don't really want to piss off the religious institutions. And I'm a two-faced scoundrel. Basically, you know, what a politician is in real life. So, yeah, it, it was my fault, mate. Wonderful. Thank you for listening to my concerns, Mr. President. We also heard you decided on your curriculum and decided that creationism shall longer be taught in sordish schools. Needless to say, I and the rest of the church are outraged. The possibility of the entire generation of school children will have their minds filled with nonsense that evolution while failing to learn one of the main talents of neurity. It will hurt us for years to come. I don't really know how to talk my way out of this one. I can't just say, oops, another mistake. Well, we're at sick. Didn't ask for opinion. Didn't want to ban creation. It's just extenuating circumstances. We'll go with that. <laughs> what kind of circumstances allow such a... For a couple of knocks were heard on the door and a young boy came in. He bowed before the archpriest, then me, before letting us know the ceremony was about to begin. We made our way downstairs where the ceremony was already in progress. The choir sang angelically as the archpriest took his position beside the altar. When they finished their hymn, an expected silence fell over the room. It was time for my part. I started my walk, bowed, and approached the old, preparing for my swift left, right, right, where I touch it with my left. Why no? I grab the scepter with my left and I touch the altar with my right. I then go on my knees before the archpriest, disrobe him at a men. The archpriest lay his sword on my shoulder. I then touch it with my right. After that, I hand the scepter to the archpriest and a sword to the disciple i believe and that goes to your dis disciple and i got up proceeded to designate sitting next to Lucian, and he said bet last year that went surprisingly well sir Does that mean i did it right my eyes met the archpriest and very slightly nodded yay the ceremony went on for another half an hour finally the moon Noon bells chimed, marked by the end of the cathedral service. We left the cathedral and to greet the waiting crowd. As I stepped outside, I heard everybody cheering and chanting my name. Lucius Gambit seemed to have been a success. He waved proudly for a minute or two. See, sir, I told you it would work. 
rented the cars and drove back to the city of Demir. Dear. Well, that was a grand success. And I say, I'm brilliant. I've brought about a new school, state of the art, 50 classrooms and top notch teaching equipment, and there'll be more soon to come. In the news, we can see some less brilliant aspects of me because people are getting fed up with the protest, and a 13 year old was stampeded to injury and is now in also General State Hospital. And there is also the anniversary of Atini Ashtaraf. Well, um, happy anniversary. Um, perhaps it's time for the administration at very honest to take a step back to display unity of the swordland to the people who very much need it. I agree. But yeah, there's been a rally for it. Fair enough. Understandable. And in the uh, ATO, they're apparently getting slightly pissy over drug trafficking, which, to be fair, that is uh, not a particularly good thing. I have relatively unorthodox beliefs when it comes to drug policy. I detest drugs, but I do think that they should be legalized, not commercialized. What does irk me is like all the marijuana shops, they're selling them and there's advertising. You shouldn't advertise them. They should be like set by heavily registered government shops. They're basically like, yeah, is ciggies and weed and other drugs. Um, you can come get them here, you know, before you purchase them. We're going to tell you how they're going to screw you up. And then we'll give them to you. But you will also be on our registry. And, you know, we'll try to assist you, wean them off you, and spend the money we would typically use for busting drugs on rehabilitation. You can also maybe make a bit of profit on the end by giving them an up market. Um, you know, economies of scale as well. You generally have them cheaper than the street competition, which would take money away from gangs, organized crime, and it would generally lead to a better, healthier society. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about, because at the moment we need to have a meeting with Miss Bolgana to try and convince Justice Isabel Edmund, otherwise our constitution is going to be skippered, as in this is a make or break meeting. We sat on the table on the second floor of La Papillon, a world-class lesbian restaurant in downtown Also. The whole floor was reserved for us, ooh, and the music coming from downstairs would to guard our voices from potential eavesdrop. I still can't believe Sol came to the boat. I'm sure he has pressured the justice on the court right after that wind. I can't speak any sentence to them. What about Justice Edmonds? Do you think we can get her? Yeah, I think she's our best bet. We have a meeting with her after all. She's not openly protesting against the old guard, but she has told me about concerns about them. She's certainly opened the dialogue, but also skeptical. She seems to be scared of a potential purge against the court. Interesting, we should play into that. We can find common ground. Uh, yeah, we'll try not to scare her. I think we're gonna play in and play nice cop initially for this whole meeting. And then if it backfires, in a second meeting, we can play Bullet Cop. Now that's what I hope for too. Um, and uh, what is the atmosphere in the court? Most justices don't really talk when I'm around. They don't trust me as I'm an outsider in the court. I only know about two justices I mentioned earlier who are with me. So we have three votes there. Also, thanks to the recent efforts of our anti-corruption force, we managed to pressure several judges into cooperation. So we have potentially four or five votes in total. So today's meeting can bring our last vote we need to reach six. The old guard are fanatically opposing your proposal. So I doubt there's any possibilities there. Uh, what about Hiram? I thought we could get to him. Um, can we rally Isabel to bring the three centralists? We'll, we'll talk about Hiram now, and then we'll focus on Isabel later. Here it might be a possibility, yes, but I advise against dealing with any of them. If we can persuade Isabel, we can get the votes we need. Lucy and Peter believe he can be persuaded, though, so I'll leave it up to you. Okay, what are our next steps here? Well, the next step is speaking to Isabel and making sure she votes for the proposal. Also, a way to approach us with a bow in respect. Who decided the untrust, sir? We have a guest coming. We'll wait for her to order. What's on today's menu? We are in a meeting. Can you leave this alone? We'll wait for a guest, thank you. It's not very polite to start eating before they arrive, particularly when we're trying to swing them to our son. Of course, sir. I'll be around. He went downstairs again. And he took a sip from a glass of water and looked at me. So, let's just move on to our plans with Isabel. And let's talk about you a little. Sure, we'll uh, get to know each other. Me? Yes. I wanted to know more about you. Yes, how have you been holding up these rough days? Is everything fine with you? I'm disappointed in you. You're a disappointment, Leon. How are you holding up these rough days? I want to know more about you. Sure. What do you want to know? Tell me about your past. You usually don't have time to talk alone. I was just interested to get to know more about you. 
this is an awkward conversation. I shouldn't have gone down this road. Um, I don't really know what to say. You already know about my background expertise. Come on, Nia. I'm just trying to have conversation. Uh, that's not what I meant. Anyways, let's talk about what we'll do with Isabon. Okay, I don't want to put you on the spot. Come on, Nia. I'm just trying to make conversation. Well, how about you tell me something first? What do you want to know? Did you know that I'm one of the top four best presents of Swordland? There's not much to tell. I'm apparently a pretty regular man. Hmm. I used to be part of the Young Swords. I don't think she likes the Young Swords. I only played into the Young Swords because I was going to go communist this route so I could at least, you know, make them less pissy with me. Um, well, we'll go with a uh, jokey thing. She frowned at me and then smiled. Very funny, Mr. President. She took a sip from my glass. Tell me, Mr. President, why did you vote for Sol in the 46th Congress? He promised me a seat in his cabinet. I couldn't say no. That's the truth. Will Nia appreciate the truth? No. Uh, I didn't want Alfonso's leadership. At the time, I really wanted him to continue leading the party. We could go with that. That's, that's too nihilistic. And Nia seems to be idealistic. We'll go for three. So you really did support Tarquin Sol. Sol wasn't that bad. Our son is a rich businessman. I couldn't trust him. Um. Hmm. Sol wasn't that. Uh, Sol did have his his up points. Anyway, I think Isabella is going to be here very soon. Maybe we should turn to topic. Let's not try agitate her when she comes. We won the vote. She already has pressure on her. Not to mention the pressure from the anti-corruption police. But if she feels concerned, we might lose her. But it's important not to put too much pressure on her. Agree. We shouldn't scare her off. I disagree. We must keep up the pressure. Okay. Well, as I said, be nice, cop, for now. That's the best. Suddenly I noticed Justice Isabel Edmonds coming upstairs. She was wearing a plain dark dress that hid most of her features. Good to see you, Miss Edmonds. Neil got up from her chair to shake Isabel's hand. Stand up for the handshake. No need to, you know... Well, I was going to say stand on ceremony. Sit down like an asshole would be a more apt description. Mr. President, good to see you. Good to see you too, Justice Edmonds. She took a seat across the table. How was your day, Miss Edmonds? I would normally say good, but this time I would take the liberty to say that it was insanely exhausting. Heavy court matters again. Not that I'm complaining. It sounds like you are complaining, but semantics. Certainly the way to approach us. Are you ready to order, sir? Madame? I'll have a short placer, please, as you wish. Uh, Miss Edmonds, you go first. I haven't decided. I'll have a salad, thank you. Of course. And you, sir? I will have a salad too, because, you know, we're twins and we think so alike. Perfect. He quickly took a couple of notes in his tidy notebook. I'll be back shortly. He went downstairs, left us alone on the upper floor again. Miss Edmonds, you know why we're here. How's the situation in the court? We want to cooperate with you. Miss Edmonds, we can work together, be BFFs. That's very welcome, Mr. President. I want the same thing. She moved herself on her chair to be more comfortable. You know, Mr. President, since you tried to intervene with the court's decision on Miss Elson's case, you created some hostility against yourself among my wing. But, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the successful vote in the Grand National Assembly. But it pains me to say your proposal has very low chance of getting through the Supreme Court. That's why you're here. And then what do you think about the proposal itself? Go on. To start with, I think it's disrespectful. You're packing it as democratic reform, yet it smells like an attack against the Supreme Court. Miss Edmonds, you know it's true, Miss Morgana. Mr. President is aiming to destroy the court, and he needs us to do so. Why should I vote for a proposal that would take away my immunity as a justice? Was it, was this the promised reform? Impeaching a justice with the decision of the Assembly? The same Assembly that your party controls, by the way? We both know the old guard that dominates and obstructs the court need to be dealt with. Proper power bounds, Miss Edmonds. Try to see the bigger picture. And what about the powers of the Supreme Court? Sure, see the bigger picture. We need balance. But you also, you do need to be held accountable. Like, Oswald is a scumbag. And justice immunity in severe cases needs to be compromised. I don't think it should be a majority. It would have to be something like uh, unequivocal, unequivocal evidence of corruption or mismanagement along with a two-thirds maybe even three-quarters i don't know vote from the assembly in order to get rid of them problem you're already trying to take away a right to vote on the constitutional legislator and also open a way to impeach us are you not she sighed at this moment the waiter came back downstairs carrying plates of food after seeing that we're in the midst of a discussion he averted his eyes as he approached her 
He quickly started serving food and refilled our glasses. He placed a plate of salé lucre in front of me. It looked very fresh and smelled of olive oil. I was very hungry. Bon appétit. Thank you. It looks delicious. The waiter bowed and we quickly went downstairs. We wished each other a good meal and Isabel and Nia slowly started to eat. So, Miss Edmonds, are you still thinking about some of the old, saying that about the old guard? Of course nothing has changed. That's good. We are still of that in common. That doesn't mean I'll accept the proposal the old guard opposes. Nor will it mean I'll put the whole court under the bus. The impeachment clause about the justice affects all of us, after all. I understand your concern. I also do not agree with that clause, but we must start somewhere. I'm supporting the president because he made this proposal with good intentions. Isabel took a sip from the water and turned to me. Tell me, Mr. President, what are your real intentions? We need a best democracy, that's all I'm striving for. I know that I can't do a lot, but I'm doing my best to start the change. I want a strong sword now, I don't think she's going to back that. I'm trying not to lose the poor the people. This is their will. We need a better democracy, and that's all I'm striving for. Better democracy by eliminating justices whenever you want, by binding the court to the assembly to do their bidding. Why did you include it that in your proposal, knowing you need our votes? I had to take my chance we needed to clean up the old guard. I thought you would agree to that. I believe that respectable justice like you were against the old guard. Chaw. Sure. Yeah, I thought you would absolutely love it. No, I didn't, but I'm just going to say that anyway. You know, oops, made, made a mistake. Don't don't blame me. Silly goose here. Look, I'm in the opposition to them and definitely stand against their dominance, but this is not the way. But let's say this proposal goes through. What will be your next move? We'll eliminate the old guards from all branches to ensure the new process respected and executed in transparency to further reforms focus on internal and external threats. Transparency. Transparency is good. I see. Isabella took a sip from her water and looked at me without saying anything. Miss Edmonds, please help us achieve this victory. We have to move together. Please. Perhaps that is the way we must take. Can you explain one more thing? How come you think that the Supreme Court right to vote on a constitution amendment is a major problem with such priority? I thought we were... I'm asking the President, Miss Morgana. That why don't you ask the reformers this proposal was made together? I don't agree with this, to be fair. This isn't something I didn't want to include in the Constitution. The court has been stopping every constitutional change, Miss Edmonds. The judiciary should have not have legislative power, Miss Edmonds. That was a red line for Mr. Richter. We had to include it. Although this was a point I didn't want to include in my Constitution, I feel like blaming entirely on the reformists is going to make me seem weak. So we're going to have to at least own up to it in this position. So... We shall just say, uh, you should not have legislative powers. So that's your position, I see. I don't know what to say, Mr. President. These changes are one thing, but there's also your political view. I don't want to hand a victory to Malinvist. I don't agree with that. I am no Malinvist. Yeah, d deny, deny, deny. Um, that's, that's not me. So you're not a fan of Malinvin, who cares if you're into Chancellor Hegel's and Valis and Socialism or Sordo Socialism or Bernard Circus, it's all Carlos Marcos socioeconomic in the end. You're playing with fire, Mr. President. Near cuts in. If we are to come back to the point of unifying against the old guard, I want the old guard gone as much as you, but I'm torn about this proposal. Don't be. We're in this together. We will open the way to further reforms too. Mr. President, I'm also wondering, if you're in Sol's position, how would you have structured the Supreme Court? And what do you believe its role? Purely advisory body for legislation in the High Criminal Court. I do believe it should have the power of judicial review and to strike down laws that are against the Constitution. However, the package I am pushing for goes contrary to what I'm saying here, and we need to keep, you know, consistent with what we're doing, so we're going to have to go for number one. So, what do you think about judicial review? It plays an essential role in ensuring that each branch of the government recognizes the limits of its power. It gives the core an abrupt... We'll go with that. Precisely. I'm glad we agree on that. Isabel went on to finish the remainings of her salad. So, Miss Edmonds, what are you thinking? I want to help you, Miss Morgana, but I still have great concerns. The proposal would pave a way for WPB and the CSP to enter the Assembly. I don't want to support this. We can't silence political opinions anymore. I don't agree with their ideologies, but we must be fair. The threshold not only affects them, but all of us. It can lead to a political crisis in the future. If you give... If I give you the power to impeach us today, what's going to happen tomorrow? Can you even give me any guarantee that it was not a result in the destruction of the court? As I said before, it is only safety a mechanism for threats like the old guard. You have nothing to worry about. Justices cannot be impeached so easily. We'll make sure there's rigorous standards. Well, 
I actually have to say this too. I'm really surprised by the proposal abolishing memory on the roll. A support this part. Tell me, what are you planning to do? Yes, he should be properly investigated and finally answered. I have no sub plan. The important thing here is now he will be a regular Swordish citizen. I see. Anyway, I don't have much else to say. Have you decided then? Let's see. Miss Edmonds, I really hope you can vote for this proposal. Please, Isabel. This vote means a lot to us. That, that just sounds weak. We'll go for the top one. Okay, let me finish, Mr. President. I regret to say I do not see eye to eye with you, Mr. President. I don't think I can support this. Look, I'll be clear. Whatever you think about, you will vote this. That's very sad to hear. Is there no way to change your mind? I don't think so, Mr. President. Justice Edmonds. In fact, I think it's time I leave. I see that we're finished our meals. I think it's time to conclude this meeting. Thank you, everybody. Failed to convince Isabel in the first meeting, so I may have reloaded and gone through the conversation again. Everything's the same, except at the end, I decided to say, hey, we're going to put Sol on trial. And now, for some reason, Isabel's like, yeah, I can get behind your proposal. So we're team members now. Yay. I think I can get behind this. That's great to hear. Thank you, Miss Edmonds. I appreciate it. I can get you the three votes you need. We were already somewhat inclined to vote for the proposal. I will talk to my group. Uh, are you sure that you can bring in these votes? Thank you. Appreciate it. That's great to hear that you support us. Thank you. I see that we are all finished our meals too. I think it's time to conclude this meeting. Thank you for inviting me here, Mr. President. Thank you for coming. Let's change this constitution. For the better. She stood up and shook my hand. Thank you for the meeting, Miss Edmonds. Likewise. Isabel took her coat and walked downstairs. Nia and I looked at each other. That's good news. It's great news, really. Phenomenal news. Um, we still need to reach out to more people. She won't be enough. The more the merrier. We should maybe talk to Lucy about the other options. We may try to reach her in if you want. After a few moments of thoughtful silence, we got up from our seats and left the restaurant. It was a good start, but I'm still uncertain if Isabel would be enough. I got the president, Cadilla, and Sarge started driving me home. And next, we're going to be targeting Hiron of the Supreme Court. Uh, I'm kind of broke, so we're going to uh, send Lucien, considering I'm pretty sure he's a member of the old guard and Nia would piss him off. Lucien is fairly straightforward, not the best at speaking, but I feel like he'd be probably best at convincing in this situation and it seemed to work we have achieved a private meeting which we will be attending to in the next episode so everybody keep your fingers crossed and i'll be catching you soon if you enjoyed please like subscribe this will be Murd signing over and out